All right, we are in Chapter 2 here of Metallurgy Fundamentals for our uh, Industrial Materials class at Richland Community College. Uh, chapter 2 has to do with uh, metallurgists and careers in metals industry. Uh, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, what you can expect. Um, of course, for our degree, uh, we are not looking at uh, you guys becoming metallurgists. Uh, you're, of course, here trying to become machinists or welders or um, industrial technologists, quality control people, and, and engineers um, as well. So a little bit different, but uh, all of our career paths uh, require us to kind of take a look at and understand and know a little bit about metallurgy as we go. So we're going to kind of discuss that today um, in this lecture. So again, you can pull the learning objectives from the textbook, um, and, and I'll let you stop this so you can kind of take a look at this. One thing that I wanted to mention here, of course, um, the text kind of talks about research scientists, metallurgical engineers, operation technicians, and equipment operators um, contributing to process and product improvements. But to be honest with you, I think that the uh, people who uh, are really, really kind of being forgotten about here are the machinists and the welders. Um, there are a lot of things that machinists and welders really, really need to know and understand uh, as they are looking at processing um, and making parts or assembling parts and uh, as they go through and a deeper understanding of uh, the different materials that we will be working with on an everyday basis um, really really applies and that you know as a uh, journeyman tool and die maker myself you know you just never know what you're going to be asking what material you're going to be asked to use and uh, you know so i've machined it uh, predominantly tool steel but everything from uh, you know, what I consider kind of junky cold roll steel, 1018 steel, all the way up to D2, uh, Inconel, and titanium. These are all different materials that uh, a machinist might be um, exposed to and have to make parts for. And that's not even including the plastics and, and composites and uh, other materials that you might need to. And, of course, all of our cutting tools are based on different types of materials. And the fact that... Uh, the cutting tool that we're using is harder than um, the material that we're cutting. So, so you have to kind of be aware and have a general understanding of the materials that uh, are needed. Now, um, that kind of brings me to my next point. You know, I'm a journeyman tool and die maker by trade. Uh, I do not consider myself an expert in any of this material that we're covering. So. Uh, so what is it that makes me qualified uh, to teach this? Well, um, you know, I you get exposed as a machinist to a lot of different types of materials, and you learn a lot about how to manipulate those materials and the properties of those materials to uh, hold tolerances and to combine uh, all of the different properties to get a good positive end result. Now, in addition to that, you know, uh, no matter what you're doing, even welding, welders kind of the same way. Uh, if you're talking about quality people with inspecting uh, these parts, uh, or even your engineers, you know, you'll never know what type of material that you might uh, run across or be asked to uh, work with. So, so you got to do a little research as far as what that material is, or or what some of the key parameters to to working in that material, what the hazards are. So, so this is kind of the um, reason why we have uh, you guys as uh, blue collar workers uh, as you're pursuing the associate's degree in engineering technologies, in machining, in welding, uh, in production, control, quality control, whatever you're planning on doing. This is the reason why we ask you and have you take this class so that you become aware of some of these uh, things as well as get a better understanding of where to go and how to research and find out and get the answers that you need when you have something come across your um, machine that you've never worked with before and you need to know more about it. So keep that in mind as we go through uh, with this class. So uh, 
you know, we classify materials. And again, um, the textbook is pretty much specific to metals, um, both ferrous and non-ferrous metals. We will talk and uh, get involved with uh, polymers, composites, and some plastics uh, in here as well, just so that you have a better understanding of those two. But we break down uh, metals into uh, either ferrous or non-ferrous material. And you can see from uh, this diagram, the ferrous materials are considered iron and steel, your non-ferrous, your aluminums, coppers, titanium, magnesium, zinc, nickel, uh, cesium, and of course all the others that are uh, possibly out there. So, so and we're going to just kind of touch on uh, what these are and how they're kind of used. Now, it's important to understand that most of these are alloys. So when some type of a mixture or combination of multiple elements going in to produce the uh, metals and non-metals that we're using in machining and welding today. So, and there's a lot of different varieties of applications. So as we look at these um, ferrous metals, those alloying elements are all things that are added to iron. And of course, different processes are used to do this. And every process gives us different strengths or different properties that are uh, beneficial to whatever that particular uh, part or product is going to be when it's uh, done. So you need to remember uh, steel, iron, and carbon going together. Uh, your steel contains lower levels of carbon. So in that percentage, again, there these are different ratios and mixtures that are kind of coming into it. The most common type is what we refer to as uh, mild steel or the low carbon steels. So uh, they don't have a huge strength ratio to them, but, but they are very, very important. And knowing when to use one type of a steel versus another is very important. How to choose, uh, depending on what the part is or what the application is going to be designed, uh, that also comes into play as we kind of get to know some of this material. All right, we get into stainless steels. Uh, other types of specialty steels. So you're looking at cast irons, which uh, uh, we talked about steel being below 2%. Here we're talking about as far as your low carbon steels. Now we're talking about cast irons that are 2 to 4% carbon. So you can see, even though we're still adding carbon, it's still not a large percentage of carbon that is added to it. So, And we get all these different types of alloying elements mixed together to give us the desired property that we are looking for. We'll get more into what all of the uh, properties of metals are in uh, chapters 4 and chapters 5, I believe, as far as the physical properties, chemical properties, uh, all of the different types of properties that uh, we are going to need to become aware of. So the probably one of the biggest takeaways here in this chapter is understanding how we kind of achieve uh, the property in the material based on um, this whole idea. We've got a certain composition of the alloys. We have different processes that are going into it. Uh, those processes change the microstructure in the metal, and that, of course, gives us these different properties. Now, what are we talking about here? Well, you know, if you recall back to uh, chapter one there, we were talking about the different furnaces. We were talking about uh, how the early on the processes were either um, sand casting uh, or forging with that. And a lot of the steel and the brasses, the coppers, the bronzes were basically melted into ingots. All right, now we're talking about uh, kind of a similar thing, but you know, we can be talking about forging processes, we can talk about um, rolling processes. We take different compositions, or actually the same composition of metal, but depending on whether we're forging it or, or rolling it, um, depending on the process, those processes are going to change the microstructure. The heating temperatures that we're using and uh, the how fast we cool the material or or how slow we allow the material to kind of cool off naturally in itself. That also changes that microstructure. And in so being, that gives us these different types of properties as we go. So so, and, uh, so we're going to look a little bit about some of these microscopic structures and microstructures. 
to kind of see how that influences our uh, different materials that we're using as well. All right. And it is through that microstructure that actually determines the processes. We'll talk a little bit about the different bonds that are uh, created when uh, these metals come together and these elements are all kind of linked together in the alloying process and that microstructure that's created. So the common processes that are affecting these microstructures and properties, we've got uh, forming. So heating to different temperatures, and then either a rapid or slow cooling from those elevated temperatures. All right, and uh, as we continue, then we will also talk about how we can adjust these different processes. Uh, and in adjusting uh, something just as simple as the temperature or how fast or how uh, slow we cool something also makes those changes to the uh, microstructure structure of the metal and that impacts those properties. Uh, that's pretty technical and I'll be honest with you I don't always understand all of this uh, either so um, so while we're going to talk about it and discuss it uh, for us as machinists and welders it's probably uh, a better thing for us to kind of understand these properties and how we can kind of utilize those properties uh, while doing the work that we're going to be doing on a daily basis. So we're going to stop uh, here for this. We're going to come back uh, here in the next video and we'll talk about some of the actual applications that we might run through and how we would use those applications to uh, problem solve 